Shabbat Shalom, Shabbat Shalom, Shabbat Shalom. As we always say, greetings and salutations to the 12 tribes of Israel that have been dispersed, uh, as it says in uh, James, at the 12 tribes scattered abroad. Peace, salutations, greetings to you. Uh, peace and Shalom to all those who are here today. Um, uh, my prayer is that the word comes across clear, right on point, right on time. Okay, for those that are here or those that might um, internet people later. Um, so with that being said, as we always say peace to the brothers and sisters. Um, this word is for those that are lost. This word is for those that are confused. This word is for those that are heartbroken. Um, those that have their spirit torn. It is this word, the power of the word, that can pull you out of any pit. Once again, it don't make no sense to get up here and preach about some hellfire for you and you living in hell. Your life is hell. Okay, you in and out of jail, in and out of drugs, in and out of this, in and out of that. The word is supposed to pull you out. The word we talk about in Torah class, all right? It is the, the gospel should be tied tight on your feet. Right? There's something about the seed of the woman. Right? There's power in your feet. Right? Y'all said in the Torah that I will give you wherever the sole of your feet is touch wherever you go okay but we do have to walk in that authority that Yah has given right, in order to walk in authority we got to be obedient right, we got to be humble we got to be submissive uh, things that we don't like all the time right the truth be told right change is something that we don't like but that is not our topic for today so with all that being said peace to the brothers and sisters um, those that or within the body of Mashiach. No matter how you got here, you're here. Okay? No matter how you got here, you're here. This word is for you. Um, I know we're going to be doing some... Don't run out. Some history stuff. I spoke to my past out of it. Oh, no, not that. Folks passed out already. But uh, set my timer. I'm going to kill y'all today. Right? Even though, as I say, it's a privilege to be able to assemble and get in the Word. Yes. Right? Because one day, they're coming for your book. So you have heard that. You've heard me say I say a lot. They're coming for your book. If you, if at one point in history, if when the Roman Catholic, when they were in charge of the word, did all the people have the word? So it was a Protestant Reformation. Because they said, we want the word. So if things will have to go back as it used to be, that will mean your word, I got to get that word up off of it. Denzel played it good. Denzel was a blind man, wasn't he? Book, Book of Eli played that thing good. But you know what? What was missing? Wasn't no scripture. One blind brother, only one, got the book. Then when he gets to the end of the movie, I don't know if y'all paying attention, when he put the scriptures up there on the bookshelf, what else they have up there? They have Tanakh up there? Mm. Once again, look, these folks be playing you now. They had a Quran up there too. Anyway, I said, they ain't, they ain't for the day. I said that for another day. Start my time. All right, um, so... I know a lot of people are going to be teaching and talking, already have, about this time that we're in, okay? And we've, 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 we talk about this every year. Uh, we're going to get to a little bit more depth than we normally do. Um, one, just because we need to, and two, because we didn't have that insight around this time last year, all right? So we're supposed to grow in the Word, all right? So even when we speak the Word and teach the Word, that... There should be growing within the word. It should be something that should be revealed to you or shown to you. But man, I ain't how I missed that. I, mean, I ain't see that. So in the time of Av, the time of Av, it shall be as it shall be. Okay. Um, I know some of us might have heard that phrase Av before. We'll break that down for you. Explain that to you. I don't want you lost. Okay. Uh, the time of Av, it shall be as it shall be. Really quick, brother, give me Romans 15 and 4. Brother, give me John 6, 44. Really quick. 
keep this thing rolling. Romans 15 and 4. John, and give me, go ahead and give me John 6, 44 through 45. Let me ready, sir. For whatever was written before was uh -huh. written for our instruction. For our instruction. That through endurance and encouragement. That through what? Endurance and encouragement uh -huh. of the scriptures. Of the who? The scriptures. What we gonna get? Endurance and encouragement. Uh -huh. We might have the hope. expectation. Hope. Might have expectation. We might have a hope. Right? So whatever things been written before time is written for your learning. Okay, go ahead and look at John 6. No man can come to me uh -huh. except the Father which has sent me. Draw him, mm. and I will raise him up at the last day. It is written in the prophet. It is what? It is written in the prophet. In the where? In the prophet. Didn't he just read it? I hope it's found in the scriptures. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. And they shall be all taught of God. Mm. Every man, therefore, that hath heard. A couple of men. Every man. Black man. Every man. White man. Every man. Orange man. Every man. Alien man. Every man. Every man. <laughs> Therefore, that have heard and have learned. They have done what? They have heard. They have heard. Mm -hmm. And have learned of the Father cometh unto me. Mm. Mm. All right. So, let's get it rolled. So, in the time of Ab, it shall be as it shall be. Okay. So, if we are not, I'm sure we've probably heard about, some of us have heard about the 400 year Right, props to the time frame that we're in, right, from 1619 to today, 2019, right? About in 1619, how when uh, the ship that arrived, you know, that, that that's our 400 year mark. And uh, we're going to talk about some things today. I was talking with a pastor last night, or texting, or whatever you call them, you're Facebooking, uh, you know, that if, if someone's a history person, that you know in the 1400s and 1500s that there were people on ships here, right? So uh, what we have to do is we have to be a people that when it comes to the word, you got to take it as it is. Don't flip it. Don't bend it. Don't try to shift it to make you fit. The word testifies of itself, okay? Our job is to, is to search out the matter, right? Right, y'all hide something, and it is your job to search it out. Okay, so the ships arrived in 1619. Right, we get to here 2019. We have our 400 year prophecy. We'll get into that today. All right, the first Africans in Virginia landed in 1619. It was a turning point for slavery in American history, but not the beginning. Sometimes we look at history. A lot of times, people will suddenly say something. To kind of let you know that I know, but I'm not going to let you know what you don't need to know. I'm not going to let you know. Because you don't need to know. I'm going to be a little subtle about something. So it was a turning point for slavery in American history, but not the beginning. So they're letting you know that, yeah, like this, this was a turning, but it wasn't the beginning. Okay? Is that a literary hurdle or hint? Is there a hint? So we're talking about Av. Okay? So we know what I think about our Hebrew months, right? The biblical or Hebrew month is what? It's numbers. There's not a name, right? Month one, month two, month three, like with the days, right? Day one, day, what, what day of the week has a name? Shabbat. Shabbat. Day one, two, three, four, five, six. Shabbat. Shabbat. Okay. Uh, so with our Hebrew month, the fifth month is what we're in now, the fifth month. Okay, fifth month going back from Pesach or from or from the Aviv or from Nisan from the first, right? So one, two, three, four, five. Okay, here we are. All right. Now, once they came out of Babylon or the post-Babylon era, right? The return or the Aliyah. When the Israelites go back home, it's called an Aliyah. Okay? Aliyah. So the return. So when they came out, the fifth month. What had a name? So they had names for the month when they come out of Babylon. Once they came out of Babylon, and the fifth month was called Av. Okay, the fifth month was called Av. Right? No, a lot of us, oh man, that's that ain't that's, that's pagan. It's this, it's this. It's, 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 slow down. Come breathe. We have to be able to think, analyze. We have to analyze the scriptures. Okay, ain't nothing wrong with analyzing the scriptures. Ain't nothing wrong with thinking. Okay, we can't be robots. We have to think. Think, think, think. I told a student this week, says, son, between them two big ears, you know what you got? You got a brain. 
You got to use that brain, man. The mirrors is big. We need to soak in some information. Let it sit. Okay, process some stuff. We got, y'all gave us brains to be able to think. So we have Av, or the fifth month. Okay, we look at Av in Hebrew. What does Av mean in Hebrew? Father. Right? Av, Father. If, we, if we're familiar with that, maybe in uh, one of Shaul's writings, he says Abba. We cry out Abba, Father. Right? Ar uh, Aramaic. Right? If I was to say Avi, my Father. Then we prayed earlier. We all in the prayer said Avinu. That means what? Our Father. Okay? So in our paleo, we have the, the ox head, and we have the tent, or the house, okay? And I got that in the little picture there for you. Our more modern Hebrew, Hebrew, okay? And then we have it transliterated for you, Av, which means Father. So we can look at the fifth month, and we could, we could say that the fifth month, or the month of Av, can be attributed to who? The month of who? The month of the Father. It mean what it mean. Okay? The fifth month or the month of Av can be attributed to the month of the Father. The fifth month, also known as Av, is the fifth month from Aviv. It's the summer month. Usually 30 days between July and August. Some things happen during the fifth month in your scriptures. Some things happen in history. Aaron died during the month of Av. Right? So this, we think somebody brought up in today about Aaron and uh, the, the golden calf incident and realized that Moshe prayed so hard for him to lie said, I'm going to let him make it. There's going to be a certain time, a particular month, I'm going to come give what's mine. I say it's a lot of time. When it comes to Yah, I, I don't understand from a worldly perspective, Big Perm on the first Friday. People scared of Big Perm. Big Perm want his money. Big Perm going to get his money. I'm sending him to come and shoot you. People scared of Big Perm. But when it comes to things the most high, why ain't we got no... Why ain't we scared? We're we most scared of Big Perm. So the fifth month from Aviv, summer month, usually 30 days, July and August. What month are we in right now? August. Aaron died. Solomon's temple destroyed. The month of Av, or the fifth month. Herod's temple destroyed in the fifth month. Didn't Yahshua predict that? He came to Jerusalem, he was weeping. He was talking about you had no idea what's going to happen. And the Romans came in. Right, traditionally, a time of mourning, praying, and fasting. As we already stated, Av in Hebrew just means father. And if, if you miss something and you want to get some notes, let me know. And I, I'll be glad to share it with you or, you know, get you the slide or, or you know, whatnot. Because I don't want to mess up nobody notating. Okay. All right, Solomon's temple was destroyed on the 10th day of the 5th month, 586 B.C. 10th okay. day of the 5th month of 586 B.C., Solomon's temple. Herod's temple was burned the 9th day of the 5th month in 70 A.D. The fifth month, the month of Av, the month you're in right now. What else happened? 1492, the Yahudim expelled from Spain. They were expelled, some were expelled to Sao Tome. I don't know where Sao Tome is, it sounds kind of cool. 1619, mid to late August in Jamestown. During the month of Av. So Yahudim were expelled from Spain and Sao Tome. Where, where is that at? Anybody know? Look, look, I, I want to go look at that. Look at that water. Then sister over here put a post by the beach. There go your beach right there. Look at that water. It's hot. It looks warm and cool. If you want to get there, that's where it is. So in 1490, it was the month of Av, the time of Av, time of the Father, the fifth month. In 1492, the, the Yahudim were expelled from Spain to Sao Tome Islands. Again, I didn't make it up. I'm just repeating some history to you. Okay? 
one of my favorite verses. Okay. Vayomer Elohim El Moshe Ehye Ashe Ehye Vayomer Ko Tomar Livne Israel Ehye Shalak Shalakni El Alehecha. Okay, what did we just read? We read Shemot, Exodus 3 and 14. Now we got some different uh, ways it's translated. Okay, um, in the first verse it says, And God said unto Moses, I am that I am. And he said, Thus shalt thou say the children of Israel, I am has sent me unto you. That's the JPS Tanakh verse. So some of the verses I'll put on here on the screen sometimes are some of the Hebrew. That's from the JPS Tanakh. That's how they translated what's in red. Okay, so what's in red is very important. Okay, right here. The Ehye Asher Ehye. Okay. Um, the second one says, And God said to Moses, I am that I am. He said, And he said, Thus shalt thou send the children of Israel. I am has sent me unto you. Just good old-fashioned King James. The, the champion, King James. The champion, man. Some folks be like, man, Put that King James down. King James, champion. That's all I know now. <laughs> God said to Moses in verse number three. Now we're starting to, we're gonna look at we're gonna look at a little change here. God said to Moses, I will be what I will be. And he said, Show shall you trade the children of Israel, I will be has sent me unto you. I don't know what to knock that was, but it was one off of Judica's site. And that was a, a really good translation. I will be what I will be. I will be what I will be. In Exodus 3 and 14. And then the last one, God said to Moses, it shall be as it shall be. And he said, so shall you say to the children of Israel, I will be has sent me unto you. I sh I'm, it should be I shall be. Has sent me, that's the stone edition to not. That's the one that I use like when we're in Torah class and stuff. So it shall be as it shall be. So when we look at this phrase, we're getting an understanding of who Yah is. I think somebody said that today, right? Somebody said in class. We gotta know who the father is, right? We got we gotta know our daddy. Okay, it's one thing for you know me to look at my boys and say, hey, you know he act like me. He look, but you know what? They know their dad. So in order for us to act like someone, we have to know them. And unfortunately, the iniquities have separated us from him. Therefore, you need a mediator. You need a you need a bridge. It's too far to cross over. You ain't willing to look. I ain't going up to Moses. You go. So you know, it's like another kind of Moses. But this Moses can go into a uh, heavenly court. But you're not permitted to go because you're human. So where Yahshua comes in, he is the mediator to the Father. Because we're just, we're some knuckleheads. We got our own issues. You got your mom and your daddy issues. Your great grandparents issues. And however far back they go, you got them. So one point of you being in here today is to learn, grow, and fight. Because someone has to stop the iniquity from rolling down. You know who we call? Do this right here. That's, that's you. There's a mirror right there. You. He didn't call uh, T.D. Jakes or Creflo Mo Dollars to jump up here and, 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 and to, to, to do some kind of, you know. No, no, he just called you. It's all regular you. Just you. Nobody special. Us. To stop, to stop that. But you have to be equipped, as we read earlier today. Right? Because there was a prophecy that went out in Genesis. You don't think y'all, y'all may have said, look, he said, look, my name is Jehovah, and I changed what? No. I changed not. So when he said that, he wasn't playing. He said, Well, hey, children of Israel, I'm gonna give you what you need when you go across. I'm gonna go in front of you, and everywhere your soul touch, you'll have victory. You won't be you won't believe what happened. They failed. So now, Shaul come along and you got to dress up for war. you got to dress up for war. And you can't go out there barefoot. Because the feet is the key to victory. The feet is the key to victory. We're out here barefoot. We ain't got the word tied tight on our feet. You know, it's kind of stylish to have you have your J's on, that you don't have your shoes tied up. <laughs> you leave them kind of loose and, you know, let the strings barely hang out. The book tell you, man, tie that thing on there tight. What your, your book tell you? I want to walk around loose. Every time I walk, my shoe about to come off. Because if my feet ain't protected, the serpent seed can bite you. 
Sometimes we fall down, we're not able to get up. Or we're like Kevin Durant, the guy that tore up your Achilles, and you just on the ground. You can't get up. You can't get up. Anyway, so it shall be as it shall be. So when we look at the Tetragrammaton, if we are familiar with just saying uh, Yahweh, Yahuwah, Yahuwah, I mean, I, I, we, we're not really big on that, okay? You can say it as good as you want to. You got to live it, though. All right? You got to live it. Okay, how good your Hebrew is. If you ain't living it, it don't matter. I know this for a fact that when the people in Judah spoke perfect Hebrew and knew a lot of stuff more than we did, you won't believe what God did. He brought that place to ground. He had no mercy. They were saying all kinds of stuff from perfect Hebrew. Save me. Help me. No, you better get this book working. So you have to live it. Okay. So uh, the tetragrammaton here is, is a, just a noun, describing someone. But up under, the word haya is a verb. It means to be. To be where? To be location, to be time, uh, the, to, is the object, to be whatever you want to be. Okay? Right? Yah says that the earth is his what? Footstool. Right? Yah is not attached to time. He can do whatever he's not attached to time. We are. We're born, we live, we die. He's not. He can do whatever you want to do. Object, Yah can be uh, a wind. He can be a burning bush. He can speak through an ass. Haya. To do or to be whatever or wherever I choose. So when we go back to this uh, phrase in red, if you cover up the olive there, you have the Haya. I should have highlighted that for y'all, I'm sorry. But we just have the Haya. So in his name is action. He about that action, boss. He about that action. Okay? He's about that action. So, um, so we, 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 we say that, and before, and before we get there, what were the four, well, I'm not, you're looking at it, but the four I wills of Yah was what? I will be your God. I will dwell with you. I will walk with you, and I will be in you. Right, those are verses you need, probably need to jot down. Exodus 6 and 7, I will be your Elohim. Exodus 29 and 45, I will dwell with you. You're on the drive as well, right? Huh? You're on the drive as well, right? On the drive. You're on the drive? Yeah. You know, the, the, the app that we have. The, the what now? Drive app. The Google Drive app? Yes. Would this be on there? Yes. Yeah, oh, yeah, 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 absolutely. You know, I know, you look, you ain't, you know, I ain't no tech, you gotta say it like, you know, I ain't no, I ain't no tech, man. Yes, they, they are on, they on Google Drive. Uh, I will walk, I will walk with you. And I will be in you. Look, we see the progression of a, of a relationship. Okay? I want to be with you. We kind of like, no, nah, you know, I don't know if I'm trying to be that serious with you. Well, I'll, dwell, I'll dwell with you. I'll settle down with you. All right? Some of you ladies in there that had a man pursuing you, like, look, I, I want to be with you. Nah, I don't know. You, you ain't really getting my number. <laughs> then, you know, went, you know, went to your job, and, 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 and now they ain't got a job where you work at. <laughs> I will dwell with you. Then when you come out to your job, I'll walk you to your cop. I will walk with you. Then said, man, I want to be in you. Y'all said, I want to be in you. Well, we've been playing hard to get with him for a long time. We have to have to give in, have to submit. So, let's get down to business. All right. HR 1242. All right. Congress 2007 2018, 400 Years of African American History Commission Act. Okay. That is factual. That is not a, you know, whatever. That's very, very. Factual, very, very, very factual. That happened. Okay, and it happened on your watch. And things we need to consider. January 18th, 2018. So this was signed in January 18th, 2018. That means somebody was counting. Mm. That means they knew it was year 399. This bill establishes the 400 years of African American History Commission to develop and carry out activities 
throughout the United States to commemorate the 400th anniversary of the arrival of Africans in the English colonies at Port Comfort, Virginia, 1619. And then we look at a quote that it said earlier that this was not the beginning, though. Interesting. They just said, here, this is the beginning. Another statement was like, no, this ain't the beginning. We, we acknowledge this, this ain't the beginning. So our, we will have to know why. What's it have to do with you? What's it have to do with the body of Christ? What's it have to do? What does that mean? Why so complicated? Why so many lives? Got to go through all this mess. So let's look at Genesis 15 and 12. Bereshit. Bereshit means what? Yes. Beginning. The beginning. The beginning. So, Genesis 15 and 12, and it reads, and when the sun was what? When the sun, y'all y'all hear me out. When the, and when the sun was going down, all right? Sun was going down, interesting. A deep sleep fell upon Abram, and lo, a horror of great darkness fell upon him. And he said unto Abram, Know of a surety that thy seed shall be a stranger in a land that is not theirs. And shall serve them, and they shall afflict them four hundred years. And also that nation whom they shall serve will I judge. And afterwards shall they come out with great substance. And thou shalt go unto thy fathers in peace. Thou shalt be buried in a good old age. But in the fourth generation they shall come hither again. For the iniquity of the Amorites is not full yet. And it came to pass that when the sun went where? Okay. And it was dark. Behold, a smoke, smoking furnace and a burning lamp that passed between those pieces. So in the beginning, or in, in verse 12, the sun was going down. It wasn't down. By the time you get to verse 17, the sun was down. So we have a little gap of time. The sun was going down, and then the sun went down. So in between the sun going down, like it's not dark yet, but it's, it's dusk. It ain't dark yet. It's in that gap. This word was spoken. In that gap, this word was spoken. How many times have you read a passage and the prophet is talking? And he's talking about one thing, and he goes way over here. And then before the chapter ends, it's back to whatever the chapter, the chapter started. So as the sun was going down, a deep sleep fell upon Abram. Darkness, horror fell upon him, and then all of a sudden, someone spoke. And there were specific things said. And then by the time the sun was completely down, okay, it's, it's over. Just like that. Okay, so it came to pass when the sun went down and it was dark, behold, a smoking furnace, burning lamp that passed between those pieces. So there were some things that were stated here about the time, 400, a nation serving, judging, great substance, okay? Iniquity of the Amorites was all that mean, right? Something couldn't happen until what? The iniquity of a certain nation was not, was not yet for you, okay? So some things to consider. 400, 400 in Hebrew is Arba <coughs> Me'ot, Ar Arba, Arba Me'ot. Okay, our bomb may help you. So that first word is uh, four, and then that's hundred. Okay? So when we look at the number, or sorry, letter four, number four, but in Hebrew we have our bomb. Okay? And look what we have in the midst of four. What's that? Hmm. Interesting. Why would that be there? Why would the father be in that four? Just why? Just because it wouldn't be there for nothing. The second word here, some of us should know. What does that mean? Cry. Cry. What does that mean? Evil. Who said? Evil. Evil. Mm. So the number four, our ba, we have av, father, and we also have ra, evil. We talk about Pharaoh or Pagro. You'll find the Ra in his name. Mouth of evil. So why would Father and evil and four... What, what's that, what does that mean, boss? Let's keep digging. 
the paleo symbol for dalit, I'm sorry, dalit numerically is what number? Four. Four, okay? Right, Aleph, Bet, Gimel, Dalit. So four, okay? Because we're looking at four, right? All right, so Dalit, the letter number four. Dalit is a symbol of the tent door, okay? Dalit is a symbol of the tent door. We look at the modern Dalit of Bundadet, you know, look like a hammer, but it's supposed to be symbolic of a door, okay? So there are some things Yah will put out there for us, and we have to walk through a door, okay? Brother, give me Exodus 12 and 23. Uh, give me John 10, uh, 7 through 9. Exodus 12 and 23. Go ahead, so, yeah, 12 and 23. Where Yahuwah will pass through to smite the Egyptians. He gonna do what? He will pass through to smite the Egyptians. So Yah gonna pass through, right? Yah will pass through, okay, go ahead. And when he seeth the blood upon the lintel, uh -huh. and on the two side posts, Yahuwah will pass over the on door. On the two who? Side post. Uh huh. You will pass over the door. Pass over the who? The door. The what? The door. Okay. And will not suffer the destroyer to come in. Not suffer who? The destroyer. The destroyer. Mm -hmm. Is the destroyer a good guy or a bad guy? Bad guy. <laughs> Start over again, brother. For your bull will pass through to smite the Egyptians. He will pass through. So he coming through the. He coming through for business. Mm -hmm. Right as in, I've been watching. That ain't how Exodus start off. I've heard their cry. Right? I've been listening. I've been taking notes. The messengers are they're bringing me word. It's so bad now I even hear that. I don't even need angels to come tell me. I hear they cry. So Yah's taking notes. Now, go ahead and read. And when he seeth the blood upon the... Upon so he has to see the... The blood. Mm. You don't believe it, but in your law, you won't believe this, but in your law it talks about there's what in the blood. Right. So the blood has to be on the door because I'm passing through and I ain't coming through handing out cookies. I'm not coming through handing out cookies. Go ahead. And when he see the blood upon the lintel, uh -huh. on the two side posts, uh -huh. the will pass over the door. Pass over the door, okay. And will not suffer the destroyer to come in unto your house to smite you. So he won't let the, the bad guy come in if there's blood on the door. And after that night, you gotta leave that house. How you gonna leave the house? What you gotta go through? The door. They got the blood on it. Because you've been saved or spared. Yeshua therefore said to them, uh -huh. Truly, truly, I say to you, I am the door. I am the who? The door. The what? The door. Not the window. No. Chimney. Door. Cadillac. Door. I'm the door. Go ahead. Of the sheep. All who came before me are thieves uh -huh. and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. I am the door. I am the what? The door. Mm. Whoever enters through me shall be saved. Enters what? Enters through me. So you got to go through the door. Mm -hmm. Looks like the same way that blood had to be over the door in Egypt. You had to stay within your house because if there's blood over the door, the destroyer cannot come in. Rah, evil cannot come in. But once that passes over, you can come out of the door that you make up. Well, keep thinking, finish reading, brother. He shall be saved. Mm. He shall go in and shall go out mm. and find pasture. So the only passage is through the what? So, how well, how many years was it in Genesis? John 10. That was John 10, 7 through 9. How many years was it in Genesis that he told Abraham in that little gap of time between the sun going down and the sun being completely down? 400. Mm. Brother, real quick, why you in John? Give me 14 and 2. John 14, 2. In my father's house there are many staying places. Mm. And if not, I would have told I would I would if not I would have told you. 
I go to prepare a place for you. Uh -huh. So in his father's house, there are many mansions, many stand places. I wonder if in the house there must have got to be a bunch of doors too. But you can't get to him unless you got to go through him. Then he reads John 6 and 44, no man can come unto me. Except see that has sent me draws him. He said he's the door. So we can see the door already in Egypt. We can see in this 400 year prophet that there's something interesting in the four, the way it's written. And we can look and say, I've kind of seen that before. I've seen Yah and then Ra before. I've seen that before. All surfaced around the door. Huh. And that's right there in the middle of that prophecy. Just, just kind of hanging out. Right? You have to search out the matter. Okay. Uh, check. Give me, give me uh, Revelation uh, 4. I might be look for and one. Could be wrong, but if I am, forgive me. One. Yeah. No, I'm sorry. Give me three. My bad. Three and uh, three and six. From three and six, read through eight. He that hath an ear, uh huh, let him hear mm -hmm. what the Spirit said unto the churches, mm -hmm. and to the angel of the church in Philadelphia, write these things. Said he that is holy. He that is true, mm -hmm. he that hath the key of Dawid, mm. he that openeth, and no man shutteth, mm. and shutteth, and no man openeth. Mm. One more, brother. I know thy work. Uh -huh. Behold, I have set before thee an open door. A what? An open door. Mm. And no man can shut it. No man can shut it. For thou hast a little, has a little strength, and hast kept my word, and hast not denied my name. Wasn't there a lot in the Torah portion today about keeping the word, hanging on to the word? Right, so that in keeping and hanging on to the word, that there can be a door for you. Right, like there was a door for them going over into Canaan. Right, there was a door that was open, right, no one could shut it. Thank you, dear brothers. So, when we look at four and four hundred. A time of executed judgment, right? That, that night was a, just, that was executed judgment. There's no turning around. There's no going back. Um, so when we're looking at this time of off, we know from what as well for everything's written for time written for learning that a lot of things happen during off. It's a time when he go is about action, right? And that fifth month is about action, okay? So a time of executed judgment. So when we look at 15 and 14 a little bit more closely, and also that nation whom they shall serve, will I judge, will I judge, will I judge, and afterward they shall come out with great substance. I know some, and I ain't trying to talk crazy about nobody, but some will say that with this prophecy, Yah is going to come and scoop you up and take you somewhere. But that will be false. That will not be right. That will be not right. And also that nation whom they serve will I judge, and afterwards they shall come out with great substance. Don't say that. It's going to judge. When we look down here in the scriptures, Vagam et Hagayom Asher Avo Avodu Dan. Dan. Right? So if you know about your tribes of Israel, Dan means what? Judge. judge. Okay? So Dan or judge. I think last and I didn't notice this last year. So Dean, Dean means to judge by subduing. This is not this is not mishpat. This is not mishpat, right? This is not shafat, like the book of Judges. But it's a different Hebrew word. Judge by subduing, regulate. More importantly, to rule over. To rule over. So when we see judge, we have to think about judge by subduing, regulating, to rule over. Very forcefully. Very forcefully. Now look at that verse again. And he said to Abram, No, surety that thy seed should be a stranger in a land that is not theirs, that shall serve them, that shall afflict them four hundred years. And also that nation whom they shall serve will I deem or judge. I will rule over them. I will subdue them. Okay? And afterwards shall they come out with great uh, substance. Okay? They'll come out with great substance. 
So in Yah's righteous judgment, there is salvation. All right? There is salvation for the set apart. All right? Whoever fits to the set apart cat set apart set apart category. But there's also destruction. In Yah's righteous judgment, there is salvation for the set apart, and there's also destruction. All right, let's turn to 1 Thessalonians 5. First Thessalonians 5 and 9. Hallelujah, never get there. First Thessalonians 5 and 9. First Thessalonians 5 and 9. You there? Hallelujah. Ain't no wrong saying hallelujah. Give him the highest praise. Hallelujah. First Thessalonians 5 and 9. For God hath not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our master, Yahshua HaMashiach. God has not appointed us to wrath. So what happened in Egypt? There was a destroyer went through. Okay? But because of the blood on the door, they were spared. They were saved. Okay? All right, 2 Timothy 4 and 8. Second Timothy 4 and 8. And it reads, Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the master, the righteous, what? Judge, shall give me at that day. And not to me only, but to all them that love his appearing. There will be some who will not love his appearing. So once again, we go back to that two-sword example we talked about this morning, about the sword, man, it, it cuts, then also heals. That's what the word does. It cuts you, guts you, but it also heals you, repairs you. Okay? Right? Because the word it, it is... is Go ahead, give me give me uh, Hebrews four twelve right quick. Go ahead, give me Hebrews four twelve right quick. For the uh -huh. word of Elohim is uh -huh. living and uh -huh. working and sharper than any two edged sword, uh -huh. cutting through even to the dividing of being and spirit mm. and of joints and marrow, and able to judge the thoughts and intentions of the heart. So that's necessary. Right? We have we have to have that. We need that. We talked about last week. It was in Second Peter one. And one in Second Peter one and four, whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises, that by these you might be partakers of the divine nature. The divine nature. So it's good to have the word cut you as the brother was reading down to your spirit. So that you can get yourself together. Get yourself together. So that the word cut you now. Because Yah's big picture, right? You gotta have the Ruach in you so we can see Yah's bigger picture. Is that for you to be a partaker in the divine nature. But you must, as the verse says, finish the rest of the verse having escaped the corruption that is in the world. You know where you live? In the world. You live in the world. You live in a country that could possibly, more than likely, fit what we've just been reading in Genesis 15. Some people will tell you and teach to you that just because you're, if you're from the Sunday side, you're Christian, you're saved, you're all right. Or if you're on a Hebrew Israelite side, if you're Israelite, you just, you just, you just, you just super straight. You just all right. And then what the book say? That you be found an idolater, a murderer, a liar, a whoremonger, a cheater, a adulterer. Huh? You nasty, you trifling, something wrong. I don't care who you are. I don't care who, I don't. You stay on the task here. Well, I, I, I read 2 Timothy 4 and 8. Yes, I did. 
Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day, not to me only, but all them that love his appearing. We have to be, uh, uh, brother, give me Luke 21, 36 right quick. We have to yearn for that day. We have to realize that's not a, that, that, that's, we have to work and fight and crawl for that day, right? This, this, the way they write, they're telling you that when he come back, he ain't come back playing. That the, the, all the prophecies about the lamb, they passed. Now all the other parts about the lion, about the warrior, about the blood, about the war. That's who's that's our that's for us or our children or our children's children. Go ahead. Watch ye therefore mm -hmm. and pray always that ye may be accompanied or accompanied worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass. To and, and to stand before the Son of Man. And to do what? And to stand before the Son of Man. So if you make it, do you have what it takes to stand? before the king of kings and the master of all masters. Mm -hmm. If you make it. You see, we be thinking, nah, I ain't gonna come and do this, do that, and I'm gonna be, you gonna be my slave, a conquer all that dumb stuff. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. All right. You believe. <laughs> you teach me, let me tell you something. When that bomb go off, and you next to that bomb, mm -hmm. you just... Second Peter. Second Peter 2. Second Peter 2 and 12. Second Peter 2 and 12. And it reads, But these as natural brute beasts made to have been uh, taken and destroyed speak evil of the things that they understand not and shall utterly perish in their own corruption and shall receive the reward of unrighteousness. Okay, and what, what was the Torah portion of the day? It was called what? I care, right? The, re the reward or a consequence. And shall receive the reward of their of unrighteousness as they count it pleasure to riot in the daytime. Watch this. Spots they are the blemishes of sporting themselves with their own deceivings while they feast with you. Because you know, you, 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 your teacher taught you that where there's wheat, there must be what? And you got to let them do what? Grow what? together until the harvest. Mm -hmm. Having eyes full of adultery and that cannot cease from sin, beguiling unstable souls. There's a lot of unstable people out there. Mm -hmm. A heart they have exercised with covetous practices, cursed children, which have forsaken the right way and are gone astray, following the way of Balaam, the son of both Beor, who loved the wages of unrighteousness. But was rebuked for his iniquity, the dumbass speaking with man's voice forbade the madness of the prophet. These are wells without water, clouds that are carried with the tempest, to whom the mist of the darkness is reserved forever. So when we talk about Yah's judgment, Yah's execution, there is a yes, I will help you, I will save you. But the other aspect is that you must have yourself together. Period. Stay in 2 Peter 3rd chapter, verse 14. Wherefore, beloved, seeing that ye may look for such things, be diligent, be diligent, be diligent, that ye may be found of him in what? Shalom. Without spot and blameless. Now he says that after he talks about the heavens and the melts melting, the day of the Lord coming, Elements passing. He's talking about destruction. Things devolving, dissolving. And after all that going on, can you be found in him or and be found in Shalom? You know how many look. You know how many folks gonna be turning on each other when feces hit the fan. Like I don't think we really understand. When the government turn on you, once again, Yah will fight with the elements. The laws of nature, but the adversary fights with the laws of man. And they come hunting you down. And there's a bounty on your head. 
And the scripture is very clear about mother against daughter and father against son. And we take that as, well, I'm turned this way, I'm walking this way now, and there's a sword in the house, and that's, that's a part of it. But people before us die. Chased down. Hunted. Separated because of how they believe. We just kind of, you know, got that western line. We're just going to kind of scurry on in there. <laughs> scurry on out. You know, fight for your life. And your soul on the line. That's why you can't have no concern about your body. Right? Because the ultimate end game, Yah's bigger picture, is that you being a partaker of the divine nature. Cephas, Peter says that. I wonder if you heard the master say that. That's a pretty good witness. Genesis 19. Let's look, find us an example. Let's find us an example. Turn to our Torah. Let's see, find things in the New Testament. Right, we got to find it engraved in the law. We got to find it in the Torah. The Torah is our wisdom. So understand. Uh, so real quick, get, uh, where's that at? Deuteronomy 5, uh, honey, uh, 4, and, 4 and 5. Let's see if uh, that might be, I don't know. Yes. Go ahead. Deuteronomy 4 and 5. Uh -huh. Surely I have taught you statutes and judgments, just as the Lord my God commanded me. Mm -hmm. That you should act according to them in mm -hmm. the land which you go to possess. Mm -hmm. Therefore, be careful to observe them. Mm -hmm. For this is your wisdom. This is your what? Wisdom and your understanding. And your who? Understanding. So the Torah is my wisdom and my understanding. Wherever I go, mm -hmm. no matter where I'm at, that, that has to be that has to be my standard. We gotta lift up our standard. Quit lowering the bar. What are we lowering the bar for? Ain't nobody else had lower bar. Ain't nobody else in this book had lower bar. But why do we want to lower the bar? Read that part again. For this is your wisdom uh -huh. and your understanding. Uh-huh. In the sight. In the sight. Yes. Of all the people. Of what? Of who? All the people. All of them. Yes. Who will hear all these statutes uh -huh. and say, Surely this great nation. Is a wise, is a what? wise and understanding people. Now you got the earth going to hell in a handbasket. Where are your intents? Mm -hmm. Not everybody out there in the world is corrupt. They're lost. But they need to hear you. They need to hear you. There's something in you that needs to be projected out of you. Right? That may be the only time that they hear the word. But if I'm in my feelings, I'm in my emotions, I'm uh, uh, not spiritually stable, I'm emotionally driven, then how are they going to hear the word? You're not on the rock. You're supposed to be on the rock. Yeah. No, the winds come, yeah. the waters come, right. but the wise man built his house on the but what we doing? What, I want to be at the beach. I ain't talking about you, sister. I want to be at the beach. She go. I look, she go, Why is that? I am not talking about you. I ain't shooting. I ain't, I ain't shooting no shots. But we want to be on the beach. Cause you got to be on the rock. Better yet, come on up to the mountain. He told you answer to going up to the mountain. Like, nah, I don't want to go. Here, you go for it. You get the word. Whatever he say, we'll do and we'll obey. Genesis 19, are we there? Genesis 19. Genesis 19 and 12, and it reads, And the man said unto Lot, Hast thou here any besides son-in-law and thy sons and thy daughters and whatsoever thou hast in this city? Bring them out of this place. We will destroy this place because the cry, because the cry, because the cry of them is waxing great before the face of the Lord. So this particular city, they yod on her. And it ain't even about the met, just I hear it. He hears it now. And the Lord has sent us to destroy it. Lot went out and spoke to his sons-in-law, which married his daughters, and said, Up, get you out of this place, for the Lord will destroy this city. But he seemed as one that mocked unto his son-in-laws. When the morning arose, then the angels hastened, Lot, saying, Arise, take thy wife, thy two daughters, which are here, lest thou be consumed in the iniquity of the city. And when and while he lingered, the men laid hold upon his hand. That's something for us to pay attention. 
that Lot has clearly people who are not from planet Earth in his house. A bunch of gay men try to pull him out and do the funky chicken with him. The men pull Lot in the house. And at the door, at the door, Smith, all the men were, were blindness. So, man, you're not from here. But Lot already knew because he already, had, you know. Anyway, so now the next, the sun rises. We should understand this. I got to get to work. My alarm went off. We hit snooze. That's something we do now. Here's news on that phone. Let me do five more minutes. Five more minutes. A lot of his news, but it's like, no, nah, bro, we got it. Come here, come here, come here. He continues, continues to sleep. We, we got to go. We got to go. Thank you, thank you. We got to get up. We got to, we got to go. And while he lingered, verse 16, the men laid upon his hand. They done woke him up. Now I got to come, come here, come here, nephew. Now I got, they got to grab his hand. We got to go. Thank you, son. <laughs> and they laid hold upon his hand and upon the hand of his wife and upon the hand of the two daughters, the Lord being merciful unto him. Held back, back the bombs. I mean the, you know, the fire and brimstone from heaven. Our air will probably be bombs. Just saying. And they brought him forth and sent him without the city. And it came to pass they had brought him forth abroad that he escaped. That he said, escape for thy life. Look not behind thee. Look not behind thee. Mm -hmm. So there was commandment. There was instruction given. Right? Isn't it in the Torah that when Yah talks about the angel that goes before them, that you're not to cross and transgress him, that whatever he says, do what he, don't go to the left, don't go to the right. Do exactly what he says. Mm -hmm. Right? He said, look not behind it, neither stay thou and all the plain. Escape to the mountain, lest thou be consumed. Lot said unto them, O oh, not so, my Lord, but now, uh, behold now thy servant that has found grace in thy sight, and thou hast magnified thy mercy which thou hast shown me in the saving of my life. And I cannot escape to the mountain, lest some evil take me and I die. Behold now, this city is near to, uh, near to, flee into it is a little one. O oh, let me escape thither, it is not a little one and my soul shall live. And he said unto him, See, I have accepted thee concerning this thing also, that I will not overthrow this city for the which thou hast spoken. Haste thee, escape thither, for I cannot do anything till thou be come thither. Therefore the name of the city was called Zor. The sun was risen upon the earth when Lot entered into Zor. Then the Lord rained upon Sodom and upon Gomorrah brimstone and fire from the Lord out of heaven. And he overthrew those cities and all the plain, all the inhabitants of the cities, and that which grew upon the ground, but his wife looked back. But his wife looked back from behind him, and she became a pillar of salt. I had to read all that to get to this. So when it comes to judgment, we'll go back to Genesis 15. If this place fits that 400 year mark, he says, I will what? Judge. So something can be appointed to you for salvation but also can become wrath. So we have to keep ourselves together. Get all our ducks in a row. That's in your, once again, whatever things we're in the foretime, we're in for your learning. Right? They just came and, and held her hand. Ten minutes ago they was holding her hand. Eleven minutes later she's pillar soft. Something to think about. Some things to consider. In late August of, of 1619, there was a was there a change in the T transatlantic slave trade? I feel like right now that out. <laughs> was there a tra was there a change? Was there a shift? Read that book, brother. Turn to page one seventy four. I got to look at the blue bracket. Got to look up blue bracket. He's like, man, what is this? <laughs> you got it. Page 174. Okay. No, no, no. This isn't a blue, this is a blue bracket. Get him. Get him. Get him, wife. Get him. Get him, wife. Get him. Actually, before the New European civilists entered the African slave trade, the Arab slave market, uh -huh. the business was initiated on the mainland. Uh -huh. In 1619, John Rolfe, um, the Norfolk born, 
first reported uh, first reporter of Virginia, mm -hmm. already a grower of tobacco, mm -hmm. had been recently left a widower by Princess Pocahontas. Mm. Um, noted uh, about the last of August came about Dutch, when the last of August okay. came a Dutch man of war mm -hmm. and sold us twenty negroes. Mm -hmm. This comment is usually held to be the first reference to the import of black slaves into what? Read that again. Um, this comment is usually held to be the first reference to the import of black slaves. So this comment is usually used to be the first reference to the import of Once again, we're talking about history now. You got history and you got his story. Mm -hmm. Once again, I might give you a little bit, I am give y'all a little bit. But I'll slide a little truth in there. Keep reading. Um, this comment is usually held to be the first reference to the import of black slaves into mm -hmm. what became the United States. Mm -hmm. um, so, um, Panfilo, um, no, Del Alvarez, or whatever, Mendez, Del mm -hmm. Mellis, and Coronado had all taken slaves with them in their expeditions of conquest in Florida and New Mexico the previous century. The previous what? The previous century. How many years is a century? Uh, so they said. Mm -hmm. In the history book, they said, look, this date is usually described as the first date, but we know mm. about a stack mm. a hundred years ago. Mm -hmm. They was here in ships. Mm -hmm. that's the way it finished on up this thing. And it, it, and it is unclear what transpired in 1619. It is what? And it is unclear what transpired in 1619. So in late August of 1690, was there a change in the translated slave trade? They were just like, man, something happened. I don't know. It's kind of like something happened in the hood, something happened outside. I'm like, man, I don't know what happened. Oh, you know. You ain't telling. You know. Everybody know. It was 400 years ago, about the latter end of August, that an English privateer ship reached Point Comfort on the Virginia Peninsula. There, Governor George Yearly and his head of trade, uh, Kate Merchant, Abraham Piercy, brought the 20 and odd Negroes aboarding, aboard in exchange for victuals, meaning they traded for food for slaves. This is Time Magazine, uh, maybe the last, earlier this month? Yeah, maybe earlier this month is in Time Magazine. So it was 400 years ago. So um, America stats this 400 years starting in 1619. Once again, our current POTUS signed a right thing with Congress, commemorating 400 years. Your book, your scripture was about 400 years, but there was people before here, like 100 years prior. Huh. Textual fact. Yah gave us a time. It was what, 400 years? That's a fact. That's what we know. We know that for a fact. That's in our scripture. He gave us something, right? Right? Surprise. Yeah. He, he gave you something. It's a fact. It's a fact. So we're stepping to the unknown. Right? What's on the other side? What if the word is true? He said, man, I'm going to judge that nation after the 400 year mark. And not just Shabbat. I'm talking about Dean. I'm, 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 I'm going to rule over it. But yeah, but there was folks here in 1500. I mean, we talk about this a zillion times, time within time, time within time. The Yah, we looked at earlier, the high Yah, his very action, he's not attached to time. We are. He ain't. He can, he can go up and down the timeline if he wants to. At one point, Moses is out here in the wilderness, mad, I can't go over, I'm upset, I go up to the mountain to see, and in Matthew 17, where Moses at? Up in the mountain with who? Yahshua and, and Eliyahu. So Yah and time, it don't apply nothing to him. That's us. When it comes to him, he can do whatever he, can do whatever he want to do. He hath made everything beautiful in his time. He has also set to the world in their hearts so that no man can find out the work that God maketh from the beginning to the end. One brother, can you give me Ecclesiastes 7 and 8? Other brother, can you give me 46? Isaiah, I'm sorry, Isaiah 46 and 10. You're like, Ecclesiastes 46? 
Never heard of it. Go ahead, whenever, whenever, whenever you get there, go ahead. Yes, sir. Go ahead, go ahead, Aaron. Go ahead, Aaron. Declaring the end from the beginning. Uh huh. And from the old that which has not yet been done. Saying, My counsel does stand, and all my delight I do. My what stands? Counsel. My counsel stands. Mm. Read it, read it, read it. Yeah. Read it, read it one more time, Aaron. Declaring the end from the beginning. The end from the beginning. And from the from of old that which has not yet been done. From of old? Yes. Like Genesis 15 old? Mm -hmm. All the way to 2019, like right now? Yep. But his counsel gonna stay in there. That's right. Thank you, brother. Go ahead. Better is the end of a thing. Better is the end of uh, a thing than the beginning thereof. Mm. And the patient in spirit. Is and the who? And the patient in spirit is better than the proud in spirit. Mm. <laughs> that's so good. But that's so good. Daniel 2, 20 through 22. Daniel answered and said, "Blessed is the name of God forever and ever for wisdom and might." are his and he changeth the times and the seasons. He removeth kings and sets up kings. He giveth wisdom unto the wise and knowledge to them that know understanding. He reveals the deep and secret things. He knoweth what is in the darkness and the light dwelleth with him. He changes the times. Seasons. He removes kings and sets up kings. Once again, our father plays chess on this planet. Every king, every leader, every ruler, that's his call. That's his will. All right, because once again, you've got to have the Ruach in you so we can understand Yah's big picture. He sets up every king. I don't matter if you're in a little uh, village off in the middle of nowhere in Tutu. It don't matter. Every ruler, every he is all of them. Psalm 8. Psalm 80 and 1. Give ear, O shepherd of Israel, thou that leadest Joseph like a flock, thou that dwellest between the cherubims, shine forth before Ephraim and Benjamin and Manasseh, stir up thy strength and come and save us. Come and save us. Turn again, O God, and cause thy face to shine, and we shall be saved. O Lord God of hosts, how long wilt thou be angry against the prayer of thy people? So David knew there was going to be a point in time where he was like, look, how long are you going to be angry? Like 40 years worth? Thou feedest them with the bread of tears, and givest them tears to drink and measure. Thou makest us strife unto our neighbors, and our enemies laugh among themselves. Turn us again, <coughs> O God of hosts, and cause thy face to shine, and we shall be saved. Thou hast brought a vine out of Egypt. Thou hast cast out the heathen and planted it. Thou preparest room before it. Thou preparest room before it. Didn't he just read that earlier? That my father has his many mansions, it was not. So I wouldn't say, so I go before to prepare a place for you. Huh. Once you put in your notes of uh, 10 through 19, but when you get to the end of 19, once again, it's turn us again, O Lord God of hosts, cause thy face to shine, and we be saved. So the question is, when will the face of Yah turn towards the scattered and shine? When will that time be? Got this up here for you. Slave ships and slaving by George Francis Dow, page three. It was the Moors who had told the Portuguese that the black-skinned people living in great numbers to the south of great of the great desert, a race cursed of God and predestined to be slaves. And by 1502, the first shipload of Africans had landed in Hispaniola to work the mines, slave-bearing fleet piled to and from the Guinea coast very nearly up to the time of the abolition of slavery. 
Brazil in 1888. But that 1502, well, that's not 1619. Same book, page 10. They were always stripped of every rag of clothing before they entered the bar, the bar canoes. As they stepped into the canoe, a native priest standing by would strew sand over their heads to exercise the evil spirit and preserve them from being overset and passing through the rollers. So in other words, there was a priest putting a curse on you, putting a hex on you, before you get on the ship. But we just read Psalm 80. He said, how long have you been angry against us? You want to turn your face? So we're looking for time. There was a hint in Genesis 15 one that the sun was going down and then the sun went down, but something was said in between. Same book, page 89. The growth of the English slave trade was largely based upon the development of the sugar industry in the West Indies. It was not until after Barbados and Antigua were colonized about 1625 that slave labor and quantity was needed in order to raise the cane and produce the Mustavo or raw sugar to be sent to the sugar boilers in London or Bristol. And then at a later day, William Cowper, an English poet, was moved to express his longing for the products of slave labor in the following lines. I own, I am shocked at the purchase of slaves and fear those who buy them and sell them as knaves. What I hear of their hardships, their tortures and groans, it's almost enough to draw pity from stones. You won't believe this, but somewhere in your book, he said, if these people stop praising me, the rocks will cry out. Sometimes people say stuff and don't know what they say. That's why the word testifies of itself. But once again, before everything is written four times, it's written for your learning. Then he, when he read in Revelation, it said, he who, he who hath the ear, let him hear. I pity them greatly, but I must be mum. I think it means numb. It's old writing. For, oh, my okay, mum, like mumble, like, like, mum, like push mouth. Okay, I pity them greatly. Okay, okay, okay. I pity them greatly, but I must be mum. For how could we do without sugar and rum? So the transatlantic slave trade, 1440 through 1870. I'm trying to make these dates make sense. It said um, <coughs> Jamestown was the first. Jamestown was established in 1607. That, that was the first colony. 1732, Georgia was the last colony. Okay. Um, and I, I had this, and I, I, my son is my son. My oldest son always has notebooks and drawing and writing stuff in it. And I asked my wife, I said, man, where's my, I got a yellow notebook. It's got my history notes in it. I need it. I got, I got to have it. When I found it, you don't believe how many of these I had. I had like 20 of these. Okay, I had like 12 of these. And I'm always barking at him, hey, man, put that notebook up. You don't need that. You don't need that. And when I threw them on the table, it was a stack of them. And it was just, I'm just like, mm-hmm, you, you're talking about your son. <laughs> I had, I had stuff for history notes. I had stuff for black history. I had stuff for Hebrew. I had stuff for work, for drills. For weightlifting, basketball, I had things categorized. My bad, son. I ain't, I ain't gonna say nothing no more. You wanna ride to the stone carry your notebook? I, 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 can't, even, I can't even say that. He get, he, he get honest. So, uh, whatever. Uh, so, the first column was 1607, Jamestown. I'm gonna read these out really quick. Massachusetts, 1630. Rhode Island and Connecticut, 1636. New Hampshire, 1638. North Carolina, 1653. Maryland, 1663. Uh, New York, 1664. New Jersey, 1664. Uh, Pennsylvania, 1681. Georgia, 1732. We have 13 colonies. In that date, between 1440 and 1870, we had the Revolutionary War, 1776. 1865, the end of the Civil War, but 1619, I think the book with the brother read, that something happened on 1619 and the clock started. So we cannot discredit everything before, but something happened with those 13 colonies. How many sons did uh, Jacob have? 12. 12. Now, one son did not go, uh, and he did not get a, a, like a territory. Which one was that? Levi. True, but who else? Joseph, Joseph, Joseph. 
his sons took his place. But the Levites didn't have a territory, right? Right. The Yah was their inheritance. It was, he was their portion. So you got twelve sons, right? You got ten sons, two grandsons, twelve. And when you add Levi, how many is that? Thirteen. Thirteen, huh? How many colonies was it? Thirteen. Sometimes y'all do stuff be right there, right there in your face. So when he said that's the ultimatum, just think to consider what makes that date the date if it is the date. And if it is the date, Genesis 15 was pretty clear. I will deem. I will judge. And if you judge like he did in Sodom and Gomorrah, I can come and save you. But if you don't pay attention to my word, I will destroy you. I'm Yah. I change. So the idea is, oh, the black party, who, 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 get yourself together. Find yourself separated, holy, set apart, blameless, without spot, wrinkle, blemish. Because he ain't going to lower the bar. He will not lower the bar. He ain't lower the bar for lot wife. I went all the way in and grabbed my hand and pulled out. But the word is so detailed. Do not look back. Boom. Fire, whatever sound. Salt. I come and get you. That's what Bill Cobb said. I brought you in this world. I take you out. I don't know all the other stuff Bill be on. I'm just talking about that phrase. That's a little bit like, well, let's look, I ain't not a spy. I don't know. I said, look, you can't be getting off in Hollywood and do what other folks no. do, man. That ain't not for you to do. If they doing that, don't you do it. And so, look, some stuff you just like, no, I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna do it. Nothing. Okay. Thank you for it, brother. I got, and I got it in brackets for you. All right. <laughs> for several years after 1436. After what? After 1436. Okay. <laughs> Prince Henry was um, occupied with matters nearer to home, uh -huh. such as the disastrous sage um, of Tangier. But in 1441, in 14 what? 1441, mm. two new Portuguese captains, Anteo Goncalves and Nuno Tristal, um, set out separately to Cabo um, Branco, mm -hmm. a designation which mm -hmm. they gave the place because of the white of the sand quarry. Mm -hmm. It is on the extreme north of the modern state of um, Mauritania, Mar Martina, yeah. which is West Africa. Mm -hmm. So we're talking about the same people going different places at all kind of dates, but why 1619? What did what kind of beacon or flag did y'all put? And if so, we got to be on our A game. Y'all sent Jonah to Nineveh. What the people do? They repented. Now eventually, they fail. You see America repenting. Do we see America repent? Okay, so what forever things are written before time is written for your learning. La cabeza, ha. I don't know how to say hard in Spanish, so, but la cabeza, ha. Duro. 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 La cabeza, duro. Duro. Hard. So we know how we know how I operate. The word went out. My word went out, folks ain't repenting, I'm going to come holler at you. So this month, highly possible, marks a 400 year from another off. Because we know for a fact the ships came in 1619 in late August. They weren't the first, but it was a particular time that separated from all the other times. And we know that he has time within, they got all kind of clocks going on. Sl uh, slave ship enslaving uh, Francis Dow, 26, 27. The next day was learned from the Portuguese, but the king of Sierra Leone had designed to catch some of the sailors 
But God, who worked all things to the best, will not have it so. And by him we escape without danger. His name be praised for it. Afterward, wrote John Swart, the slaving feet set sail to West Indies in January 1955. So the Portuguese found out that the king of Sierra Leone was going to try to capture some of them. They gave their protection and credence to God. March 28, 1555, right? The fleet again set sail. The next day passed on the island of Tortuga. Two days later, Captain John Hawkins sailing near the coast of Pinnaca, belonging to the Jesus that was named of the ship. So if you ever heard somebody think it's true, ship of Jesus, or probably Jesus because they're Portuguese and Spanish, mm -hmm. saw many Caribs on the shore and, and made into trade with them. Page 170, brother. Transformation in Dutch trade, however, was slow. The West India. Company. The transformation in who? Dutch. Dutch trade. Now look, I'm a former smoker now. Former, former smoker. A lot of kill, a lot of weed. And you won't believe the kind of guards you like to use. Dutchess. Because they burn <laughs> slow. They leave. And when you pick yeah. up the box, you know what's on the box? On the box it says Dutch masters. Because they were the masters of trade. It's fact. Before the English, before the British took over the waters, the Dutch. So here I am, geeked. Cause we got some Dutchess. You got to cut it slow because it's leaving. Don't want to tear it up. Right. Right, folks, it's blowing. They didn't know. Right, got to cut it slow. Got to get it right. Got to get it wet. Got to get it. Spit it through the razor. And it's... it's but these people, the Dutch, dominated the waters and trading tobacco. And I ain't named for the day. <laughs> New York is named after James Duke York. Please look him up. Charlestown, South Carolina, after Charles King, Charles Tun the second. Just look it up. So what made 1619 so Mm, go ahead, brother. I'll just FYI. Go ahead. The West India Company began by obtaining most of their slaves from ships, which their captains slaves captured. from who? From ships. From ships. Okay. Which their captains captured in war. Mm -hmm. War, of course, with Portugal, for the ships of the two nations constantly fought in these years. Mm -hmm. For example, for 2016, 23, and 1637, 2,336 slaves were so obtained and sold in the New World for an average price. Of 250 guilders each. Mm, awesome. The Dutch by then also had trading posts in North America. The first on Manhattan Island was set up in 1613. In what year? 1613. What happened in 1619? But the Dutch were not, they didn't establish the colonies. Not the 13. Mm -hmm. What year was that? 1613. But they started their clock in 1619. Because the Dutch, you're not. You're not us. So a specific people started at 1619. Now the clock started. But the Dutch is very clear, 1613. Go ahead. Settlements were also made in the Caribbean by the West India Company before 1630. And, I, and then, look, I didn't write the book. I just called them through it. They tried to pull out little pieces for us. Zechariah 11. I ain't right. Hugh Thomas wrote. It's actually a good book. It's a really good book. Black Cargo is another good book by Maddox. Another good book. I can't find it. It's a good book. Zechariah 11, 4 through 6, it reads, Thus saith the Lord, my God, feed the flock of the slaughter, slaughter whose possessors slay them and hold themselves not guilty. They that sell them say, Blessed be the Lord, for I am rich, and their own shepherds be them not. Now, didn't we read some passages out of these history books where they was like, Hey, something was going to happen to us, but God saved us. For I will no more pity the inhabitants of the land, saith the Lord, but Lord will deliver the men, every one unto his neighbor's hand, to the hand of his king, and they shall smite the land, and out of them, I'm sorry, and out of their hand, I will not deliver them. I wonder if that can tie into Genesis 15 about the judgment part. 
Because those that hold them not guilty, they don't hold themselves guilty. Here's another quote, uh, page 21. The success of Captain Hawkins' first voyage was so great that he had no difficulty in obtaining powerful backing for a second interloping venture. Even the Queen became a shareholder in lengthy expedition to Jesus of Lubeck, a vessel of 700 tons that had been bought for the English Navy by Henry VIII from the hands traders of Lubeck Elizabeth's stake in the venture may be judged from the fact that Jesus was valued at 4,000 pounds, about 40,000 pounds in present day values. So money was being made, right? Sugar, rum, money. 196, 197. I think it's the last one, bro. Page 20. It was also a place much used by the North American colonists who bought all manner of things there, slaves included. Thus, in 1645, the mm -hmm. young Reverend George Downing went down from Harvard. From, from where? From Harvard. Like the Ivy League school? Right. No, it is. <laughs> right, right. As, ch as chaplain of the merchantmen, mm -hmm. he wrote to his cousin, John Winthrop, still governor of Connecticut. If you go to Barbados, mm -hmm. you shall see a flourishing island mm. with many able men. Mm. I believe that they have bought this here no less than a thousand Negroes. Mm. And the more they buy, the better able are they to buy for. In a year and a half, they will earn with God's blessing. As with whose blessing? With God's blessing. So, in this action, they are giving God all the praise and glory. Mm. And then we just read in Zechariah 11, 4 through 6. Mm -hmm. Make it up as, as much as they cost. Okay. An inheritance may be gotten hastily at the beginning, but the end thereof shall not be blessed. An inheritance may be gotten hastily at the beginning, but the end thereof shall not be blessed. Proverbs 20 and 21. More precious than gold and ivory. And this Black Cargos is talking about the cost. Of, uh, in 1847, the Ashanti were selling able-bodied men for 10 bucks, the price of an old musket. The same men delivered in Cuba might bring up the time 625. So if you're used to hustling and flipping, $10, 625. Ahead, $10, 625. Black cargo, stage 198. When the molasses was fermented and distilled, it became a potent beverage called rum. Somebody give me Joel 3 and 2 became a potent beverage called rum, and the demand for rum was universal. Universal. Then the poet earlier we read talk about, man, we, he said, I'm, I feel so mum, we're doing this for something in rum. I'm pretty close now, I'm way there. But. Rum, the man for rum is universal. Joel 3.2. Who hate the good and love evil, mm -hmm. who pluck off their skin from off them, and their flesh from off their bodies. Mm -hmm. Joel 3 and 2? I know. You got it? Yeah. I will also gather all nations uh -huh. and will bring them down into the valley of Jehoshaphat mm -hmm. and will plead with them mm -hmm. there. And will plead with them there for my people mm -hmm. and for my heritage. Mm -hmm. Jerusalem, uh, sorry. Sorry. Mm -hmm. Israel, whom they, whom they, whom they have scattered among the nations mm -hmm. and parted my land. Mm -hmm. First three, I'm sorry. <laughs> And they have cast lots for my people, mm -hmm. and have given a boy for a harlot, mm -hmm. and sold a girl for wine. For what? And given a boy for a harlot, and sold a girl for wine. Sold a girl for what? For wine. The demand for rum is universal. The entire globe. That they might. No, that, that's that. That's, yeah. yeah, be good. <laughs> Yah always keeps balance. He always keeps balance. A nation's iniquity is the hour hand on the clock. A nation's iniquity is the hour hand on the clock. What time is it? Okay. 
What time is it? A nation's iniquity is the hour hand on a clock. Uh, I want y'all to put Jeremiah 25, 12 through 27 in your notes. Go read that. Put Ezekiel 25, 6 through 17 in your notes. We're going to turn to Amos. Then Brother Aaron, we're going to close in uh, Romans 3.29. So put Jeremiah 25, 12 and 27 in your notes. Okay, and this is under the section of uh, balance. Yah always has balance. The iniquity, the nation's iniquity is the hour hand on the clock. Uh, and then Ezekiel 25, 6 through 17. We'll close with Brother Aaron in Romans 3 and 29. Everybody let's be in Amos, first chapter. In the book of Amos. One and two, it says, Then, and he said, The Lord will roar from Zion and utter his voice from Jerusalem, and the habitations of the shepherds shall mourn at the top of Carmel, shall wither. Thus saith the Lord, For three transgressions of Damascus and four, I will not turn away the punishment thereof. What did he say in Genesis 15 again? 400 years? And then the what generation of the Amorites? It says, for the, in, in, in the what generation of verse 16 of the Amorites? Fourth. Fourth. Yeah. All right, back in Amos. Mm -hmm. He said, I will not turn away the punishment. I will not turn away the punishment thereof because they have threshed Gilead with threshing instruments of iron. But I will send a fire into the house of Hazel, which shall devour the palaces of Ben-Hadad. I will break also the bar of Damascus and cut off the inhabitant from the plain of Aven that holdeth the scepter of the house of Eden, and the people of Syria shall go into captivity and to curse, saith the Lord. Thus saith the Lord, for three transgressions of Gaza, and for four, I will not turn away the punishment thereof, because they carried away captive the whole captivity to deliver them up of Eden. Are these Israelite nations? Gaza? Who lived in Gaza? What, 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 what people group? We know? Well, I, now, but then. So, Goliath and them. Scroll down to verse 9. Thus said the Lord for three transgressions of Tyrus and for four. I will not turn away the punishment thereof because they delivered up the whole captivity of Edom. In verse 11, he says, For three transgressions of Edom and for four, I will not turn away the punishment. Verse 13, for three transgressions of the children of Ammon, and for four I will not turn away the punishment. We see that pattern. He says, I will not turn away the punishment. Fourth generation. Same thing he said in Genesis 15. I hope that's kind of starting to marinate a little bit. So that Yah judges and balance out things of other nations. But we have an example of that with Sodom, right? Because the crowd wax what? Great. So for non-Israelite, non-Judah, now in this same Amos, he get Israel and Judah too. That's why I say he fair now. <laughs> he, he fair. So in, in Amos 2, he's going to talk about Israel and Judah too for, they, for what he's going to do. But for other nations, non-Israelite nations, he is weighing out their iniquity. Mm -hmm. They're wicked. Mm -hmm. He weighs it out. And when it gets to a certain point, I'm going to do something about it. So from 1619 to 2019, was there a clock that started? Even though the clock already started. Technically before the transatlantic slave trade, we had the trans-Saharan slave trade. So once again, time within a time. So Yah clearly judges other nations their iniquities. It ain't got to be an Israelite nation for him to judge, for him to bring a judgment. So if that is the case, if he's going to judge, we'll pick up on this next time, then we must 
be prepared. And we can't be like Lot's wife, who had salvation right there. And because of a turn, because of a throwback, turn the pillar of salt, just like that. So we don't know, we don't know how it's going to be. We don't have a clue. Maybe we're sitting there trying to prophesy and say it's going to be loud. I don't know. I know you got to be rich. There will not be, as the book says, as, as the earth has not seen before. So we got to, So all we can do is look at time. So if our country is commemorating 400 years, if the history books is like, yes, 400 years, there was some time before, but apparently something different happened in 1619. And if that's the case, then all of the saints, all of the people who have joined themselves to Mashiach, has to be prepared because we really don't know. We don't know how he's going to judge. I think one of the sisters here, Nina, was talking about war. We just don't know. All we do know is that he brought in other nations' military against the people of Judah and the people of Israel. That's fact. That's fact. So we have to be prepared. We have to be ready, brother. Romans 3, 29. Or is he the Elohim of the Yehudim only uh -huh. and not also of the nations? Yes, of the nations also. So the Yah that we serve, I mean, his, his hand is over everything and everybody. Um, he'll use whoever and whatever he got to do to get his point across. Um, so with that being said, that was part one. Um, a little bit longer today. It won't be as long, <clears throat> long next time, but that was part one. Um, it shall be as it shall be. We have to accept who our Father is and how he goes about business. And we got to find ourselves being a little replica of him. Right? Because he's shown in his word that I'll come in at the la I will pull you out the last second. Yeah. But you cannot cross the word. Because I'll take you out in that last second too. Shalom. Thank you. Hallelujah.